Warning, due to the true nature of this content, viewer discretion is advised. What's up, wild people? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Alexandria Denise, and I am back on it again. It is 2022-2023 deer season here in Georgia, and I am back at that spot where I made a terrible shot on a doe about two years right. back in my video trial and error, right. so check out that whole adventure. But I'm kind of in a somewhat of a different spot here. Uh, it's a little forward from where I was last time, and I'm hunting with a little firepower today. So I've got my Springfield 30 out 6 with me. The brush here is kind of uh, deep, I'd say. I can't really see anything behind me, so whatever sneaks up, I won't hear it until the last minute. But uh, I got this whole field out in front of me, so that's pretty good. And um, it's not that cold out right now, but we're supposed to get a change of big drop in temperature tonight, going down to the 30s, and it is at least almost the second week yeah almost the beginning of the second week in november so the rut is kicking in if it hasn't so much already i uh, know different areas um have that effect so i did put out some uh scent at the bottom of the tree to kind of cover my own scent as well as some estrus and you know i hope i bring something in here today so i'm gonna sit back relax and see what the day brings I'm a bow girl through and through, but with limited hunting time this season, I had to get rifle hunting a shot. My heart was set on a 30 out 6 and I finally got one at a gun show. Practice during the off season at the CMP range in Talladega, Alabama. It's a prestigious gun range with state of the art electric targets that captures the accuracy of your shots for distances up to 600 yards. There's also a 3D archery range where they host shooting competitions. So special shout out to the knowledgeable staff that helped me get sighted in. By daybreak, a small buck steps from the thick brush. I immediately knew he wasn't quite a shooter, despite having the body of a two, maybe three year old. No brow tines yet. And a broken G2. Antlers are grown by members of the cervid family, including moose and elk, and are the fastest growing bone in the animal kingdom. They can break for many reasons outside of fighting. Whatever the case, males shed them annually and grow a new pair in time for the next breeding season, so maybe this fellow will be a complete stud in the following years. But it seems he's already popular with the ladies. Jerk. Don't worry, girl. There's always better males. That is, if I don't take them first. One rewarding thing about hunting is you get to personally see the animal's behavior. A nature documentary, live in person. I watched him for a while. Eventually, he's had his fill and visits a scrape and licking branch. Licking branches are to deer as social media is to us. Deer have scent glands on specific parts of their body. These in particular are the preorbital and forehead glands, which they rub on a low-hanging branch. They make scrapes below it to leave scent from their interdigital glands between their hooves. It might smell the same to our inferior noses, but each deer has a scent that's unique to them. This is how they communicate with other deer to let them know they were in the area. It's also one way tracking dogs are able to recover deer by starting in the spot they were shot. With the morning entertainment gone, I keep a lookout for the next act. Nothing. At the start of the evening hunt, a different buck, slightly bigger than the last, shows up.
for reasons I explain in my other adventure, Chasing Cottontail, I don't take him regardless of my need for meat. I would prefer a doe over a small buck. Let the young bucks grow a little and contribute to the next generation. He doesn't stay long anyway. At least there's potential in this area for another opportunity. So I thought. Day two and three, I basically just stuffed my face with some healthy stuff, of course. Though the season isn't over yet, our time in this location nearly is. So here we are, day four. So I'm singing a different tune. Myron and I agreed that whatever steps out is gon' get got. Though we prefer to take quality deer, freezer first, then fun. That was Myron. Somebody got got. He's in a climber over that way. I'm over here like, come out, come out, come out. I'm gonna text him real quick. He ran off slowly. Camping out. 29. Oh, I think he double tapped. Three shots to bring down that. Oh, let me see. Hello? He's down. All right. Congratulations. You got meat. You got meat. All right, we'll wait till dark. Cool. Maybe something will step out my way. I'll talk to you. He is down. Okay, so as you can see with the light, uh, it's past sunset, so we're in last light now. And nothing has come by my location in days, so we're going to end up moving my stand into the woods where the deer feel a lot safer during the day and pretty much all times because they really don't hit up fields that much until... If it's pressured land, they don't hit it until after dark. If it's kind of non-pressured or whatnot, they'll feel a little comfortable coming towards it a little earlier. So I'm going to move my stand deeper into the woods um, to see, like, you know, if anything comes by in the morning and I have luck. Deer basically have night vision and can still see us, but human activity at night encourages deer activity during the day so hunters prefer to move under the cover of darkness. It's a hunting tactic. Get in before sunrise and out after sunset. During those hours, deer will associate that area with danger and switch to visiting it only during the day, exactly when we will be hunting. But moving at night presents challenges though. Aside from tripping over everything, every direction looks the same. Unless you know the property inside out, day and night, without markers, the chances of getting lost increases. It's why Myron and I were hey. calling it quits after about an hour of trying to pinpoint the downed game. The temperature would drop below 30 tonight, so the meat would be fine until morning. Luckily, on the way out, I spot the white tip of his tail reflecting my light. Yeah, I just turned my head and I saw something. I didn't... Because I was looking for the underbelly. But yeah, that's him. Small buck. Yeah. 
There, buddy boy. Oh, I hit him in the back twice. Oh, really? Yeah, at least the slopes stayed on. Alright. At least we ain't gotta wait till morning. <laughs> I still can't believe you found this deer. I mean, I just turned my head and I saw like this, the tail, and then I was like, what's that? Yeah. So. All right, well, let's say a release prayer for him and get him in the truck. You got the wagon? I forgot where that is. <laughs> I forgot where the wagon is. Since it's Myron's deer, he does the honors. For me, this is one of the most important parts of my hunt, releasing the spirits of the animal taken. Every prayer is different, but the concept is the same, honoring and appreciating the sacrifice at hand. Life is supported by death, a sad yet strangely beautiful system that's as old as time. He is pretty light, he is actually. Not that much of a spirit. That's it. Yeah. The fifth and final day. New spot, new hope. I prepare some hand warmers and wait for the morning sun as well as the deer. And it doesn't take long. I caught a glimpse of two does coming from the field and get ready. This will be my first time actually taking a deer with a firearm. Plus, the target is moving. guts was just hanging out from her so, so I knew it was a definitely fatal blow no, no mistake about it tail tucked running like what's going on she's down and out that bullet hit like a freight train she is down I think I heard her go down Moments later, a second group of does move through the area. This time, Myron takes a shot.
We soon get down to assess the area. Safe to say Myron had a clean miss. There wasn't much need in tracking mine. Just a few specks of blood led us to where she dropped in the nearby swamp. Huh? Oh, she's right there? Oh, yeah, you're right. Right there. I got water. Oh, wow. Was she eating a whole yam? What is that? I blew out a gallbladder. The hard part was getting her out. Actually. But we figured Ready? something out. Think that'll work? Perfect. We her out. Release her spirit. Go peacefully now. Your death will not be in vain. Your body is appreciated. May your spirit live on and body stay behind to nourish mine as I may continue the wheel of life. And pack up. A week later, Myron dropped this stud and his other hunting buddy, this fella. And in the first location I was hunting. Congrats to them. Since I was down in Macon training for a CDL, I cleaned her up at Trails Inn Taxidermy, owned by Lynn Sams, who has been super helpful during my time here. He started his career at 18, and his years of experience definitely shows in his work. Lynn and his colleagues do a fine job preserving a variety of species from North America and Africa. Taxidermy is the art of preserving an animal as if it were alive. The most popular form is preserving the skin over a plastered mold. I can say I spent a good minute marveling at the details of their work. So if you happen to be in the area and drop a stud, I highly recommend Trails In. Oh, he ran away again? He's real skittish. Jesse! You got Chicken, chicken, chickens. All right, wild well, people, that is it for this episode right here. Uh, if you liked the video, leave it a thumbs up, share, and hit that bell notification. Right now, I'm over here with a good coworker of mine, Eric. He's taking an interest in hunting, so I am definitely I'm um, going to teach him a little thing or two and his son here who's YouTubing me as I'm YouTubing him. So they're both taking an interest in hunting so you might see them in future um, episodes right there. But he's helping me out with my deer here. Uh, his wife just went to go and help get the start. Oh, there she is. Ah, get the fire started. They have chickens and a goat who just was like swimmish and he like, oh no, and ran away. So. But yeah, we're going to uh, get her quartered out and everything, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Until then, stay wild. And the goat is over here terrified. Oh, that is crazy. He's like, what kind of family are you? Uh, he's, like, I <laughs> he's like, I thought you were loving people. Oh my gosh. You're not on the menu, Joseph. You did that. I'm going to wash my... If you want to pressure wash it like I did in the video, you're welcome to yeah, do that, of course. Because right I couldn't yeah. find any hives. Like, you, know. you finally came out to investigate. Back to hide. Okay. I swear you're not on the menu. <laughs> you're looking at something to talk about. Like, oh my gosh, do you remember when she saw that deer here? Next time I'm gonna tell a deer that she started eating her food. <laughs> Gave y'all some gossip for the next couple of days. Okay.